Hello everyone. Um, it was very interesting just listening to both of you speak because, I mean, originally I'm from Nigeria and I haven't lived anywhere else in the world for that long but Nigeria. And I'm a radio presenter, a television presenter, a YouTuber. And I remember, I still said this at lunch, when I started out on radio, radio presenters were heard and not seen. And I just want to appreciate everyone in this room because, you know, either you're from Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, wherever you're from, you have also contributed to what we have today. I think Nigerians, I mean, either Ghanaians or Nigerians, or either you're from America, predominant, I feel we have sort of been on this journey even without realizing that we've been on that journey. So Nigerians in diaspora, or Africans in diaspora, are really responsible for this huge change that we now experience now. It could be just going to school and having that you know, roommate who isn't African, but who was fascinated by your hair or by how you dressed or by the music you listened to. And even when we didn't realize that what we had was gold, you know, we just kept rallying in it and going through the journey. So it's interesting to see how all of a sudden the global currency in the world right now is Africa. And when you walk into a room, we don't have to bow our heads anymore because it's like I'm African. People are like, for real? You're from Nigeria, you're from South Africa. There's a hunger, which I think Nigerians, South Africans, Zimbabweans, Africans in diaspora have been able to sort of construct the narrative that has always been. And it's, interest, it's very interesting that we're now playing in a field where, as you talked about, having conversations where we can own our narrative, where it's no longer about what you hear about Africa, but you know, with social media apps, with uh, music, arts, movies, which has been a part of our lives for so long. Mm -hmm. After the Bollywood industry, the Nollywood has always been there. And even when you guys left home, you took a bit of that with you. So you, you influenced people even without realizing that that was what you were doing. So I feel like now is you know, very much the time to appreciate the journey that we've made as Africans. There's still a long way to go, but at least we're in the door, you know what I mean? And we did that without really banging on that door. We just did that being who we are and exporting all that we have, our music, our fashion, our art, um, you know, just, just even our hair, just things like that. So it's very important that we not just lose sight of, yeah, Africa has always been Africa and what we hear has always been what we hear, but what we hear is not necessarily what Africa is all about. And we now have the opportunity, either by blogging or by being a YouTube star, radio, television, to tell your own story. And as she said, creating more narratives, which I'm really, really incredibly, incredibly excited about. So it's not about changing the narrative that has always been, but creating more and you know, letting people know exactly what we are as a people. The conversation is beginning. It has started long before we even knew that we we're having a conversation. Because there's always been a curiosity, even as dated back to when people thought, Africa was filled with monkeys. You were curious, that's why you thought we just had monkeys in Africa. There was something about us that made you want to have that conversation. I think that, you know, a lot more tools have been created that have helped. And also, are people accepting who we are in our country? I mean, 10, 15, 20 years back, you didn't really see many people rock African brands with pride as much as they do now. Do you know what I mean? We, did, we had to start that movement before the rest of the world would take place because we don't, we can't, we don't, they don't owe us anything. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's we being comfortable enough in our hairstyles. African hair is a thing now. You know, before we all complained about having the natural hair and how it just wasn't accepted. But it took us being bold enough to take that step. And I feel like, you know, the conversation has started, as I said, uh, people are now a bit more comfortable. I would always say to my my counterparts in radio, television, or even the musicians, the burner boy, as you said, you cannot, there will be no burner without the Africans in diaspora. The same Africans are the ones that are preaching this message that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. They got to a point where either you went to boarding school in England or you, you, know, you went to school at an early age in America, you know, there was always that question around, there were probably three black people in my school, we have to stick together, or you know what I mean? Our hair was always where people always wondered why it looked this way. Mm -hmm. Our fashion wasn't accepted, but when, I, when we as Africans got comfortable enough to wear that blazer, wear that print, mm -hmm. people would ask questions, hey, where is this from? It's from Africa. Do you know what I mean? And, you, and we can make that available. So with music as well, the music journey has been from the likes of Fela, who did not need to change who he was to adapt into the international market. Mm -hmm. He was who he was. Do you know what I mean? And he started a conversation for the creatives now to enjoy 
what is going on today. So we cannot look back. I mean, a lot of our parents didn't have the opportunity we have now to change the narrative. And as Andrew just taught me this word, not change, but create new narratives. That's what we've been doing. So our parents think there was a dark age of no media coverage per se, or what the media would run with and think this is what Africa is about. But you have a lot of young Africans who have grown up in the international community who can then tell people, this is not what it's about. This is me. This is where I'm from. We have roads, beautiful roads. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And we have fashion, culture, food, and music, which is amazing as well. So I think it's just a matter of time. I wouldn't say we don't talk enough, or the conversation has started. Mm -hmm. We're comfortable now in being who we are. And you can't really blame Africans for the longest for not being as comfortable as they should have been. Because a lot of different African countries have been through so much oppression, I mean, we all know, but well, let's not talk about those dark parts <laughs> yeah, today. But you know, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about conversations like this because I feel like it's always been hard. You know, the cameras are just what is new. And then we have more mainstream um, opportunities to definitely be who we are and be cool at being who we are. Since we're all in the room now, we can talk to ourselves. We might as well just tell ourselves some hard truth. I feel like we need to stop. We need to include ourselves more, you know? We need to not see Nigerians as Nigerians, South Africans as South Africans, Kenyans. As, I mean, on Twitter, they have this light-hearted, because that's what I call it, because Nigeria and Ghana. Yeah. But you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're my Ghanaian brother, so of course. You know, <laughs> Ghana jealous, <laughs> Nigeria jealous. And, <laughs> well, we hear it's not Nigeria or Ghana that has the best jealous, so you might want to <laughs> reduce the clap. Uh, but, I, but I think, you know, beyond the light jabs we throw at ourselves, we need to collaborate more. If we come together more, we make a, a louder noise, we make a bigger effect, uh, you know, and, you know, collaboration in movies, uh, let's it just not be Nollywood. Let's Nollywood also have a part of Gollywood in it, and I don't know what they call South African. You see, that's part of the problem. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? We need to not just look at the international market as the goal, but also connect more in music, not compete, but collaborate, you know what I mean? It's, there's this thing, with, we all heard about the craziness that happened last year with South Africans killing other Africans. Right. You know, it, it, it is sad when you think about the fact that the world is watching and we are the highest global currency right now, just being African. People love the way we sound, they just love the way we look. Do you know what I mean? Now they can't intimidate us, we intimidate them. We need to speak together as one. Netflix, as she said, is now you know, churning out African content, which we've always had. You know, but let's do more collaborations, because that's the only way I think we can sustain this trend. Because what will be sad is it becomes a trend. And after the trend is over, then what next? Do you know what I mean? A lot of businesses have been built within this trend. Look at what we're talking about, Af Afrochella and you know, Africans flying back home to just be a part of the movement. There's a curiosity in the air, but we as Africans, we have to tell ourselves the truth. We need to do more. You know, let's not just always make it seem as if that Ghana person, those wars need to go music-wise, collaborate more, you know? Why are we so excited to collaborate with Drake, but your African brother, you feel as if you're better than him? Mm. You know, what about us making the music solidly from Africa? And they, a lot of people are doing it, don't get me wrong. You know, we have a lot of, you know, Mialade and Angelique George did this amazing body of work, which is great, you know? So a lot of people are doing it already, but more of that, collaboration in fashion as well, in music, in arts, so that we can then tell a bigger story. We've we were born into these certain things, and some of these things have been, for, for a long time, it's one of natural hair, for instance, for a long time, way before we were even born. Um, we, the, the African culture itself suppressed the individual, and it's only now that you find people who know better, who can now begin to change the narrative and include other narratives that say that this is not necessarily bad, this is great, my hair texture is great, I love the look, I wear it because this is how I feel confident in it. Um, you know, and it goes back to what she said, where in those days we looked to the foreign world to see what was, and you know, in terms of the news, movies we watched, so it definitely influenced the culture that you know, was available. Because back then, everybody would believe that every music video you saw, girls dressed in a certain type of way. So I guess the onus is also on African leaders, as she said, and you know, leaders in terms of whatever field you find yourself in. I like to say to everyone, you know, we're all preachers, regardless of you not standing on a pulpit. You know, you can be a fashion designer, you're preaching by what you make. You're a public speaker, you're preaching by what you say. You run a website, you, your message is basically who you are. I also think that it's, it's, it's 
necessary for us to begin to educate the younger ones who are coming as well. And how can they get educated is exactly what she said, when they begin to see people who are standing in their truth and owning their narrative and sharing that narrative with the rest of the world. It seems like just words, but it's beyond words. You know, you find people who are comfortable in their skin enough to say, this is who I want to be. And you know, just something as little as coming to America, for instance, the first one, you had people, Americans, who would speak like Africans. But the second one that is coming, I know some South African people who are in the movie, you know, and they're in that movie to portray what it's like to really be a South African person. So gone were the days when you needed someone to have a South African accent and you go and find somebody who is like, you know, from Hollywood to speak this way and they have to take trainers. Now, there are many actors who are at home who can. And image is something that is, as much as we like to say, it's also personal because I also feel like, you know, for those people, for us to have this well-rounded conversation, some people have had to sort of be that way to get in the door. And getting in the door was necessary for you to look a certain way at that time. But while you're in there, as Michelle Obama would say, it's not about walking through the door, it's about opening the door for people to come in behind you. And a lot of people have laid the, the foundation for what we're enjoying today. So I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting conversation and a very interesting question which you raised. As Africans, we need to embrace ourselves more and sell, not necessarily sell, but own it more, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I just to wrap up, I also think that it's very important individually um, to literally have no boundary to selling yourself and selling your ideas. And I know a lot of people are restricted with, oh, you know, if I reach out to that person, is, um, is it even good enough? Are they even going to listen to me? I think if we begin to network differently, like when we have network forums like this, it's okay for us to know individually or collectively what this person is about, but share more authentic stories about how you actually got to where you got to. Uh, it's very necessary to share those stories because it can encourage someone who might be working on an idea that might think it might not necessarily be you know, that great, but the courage that you need to venture out is really what it is. I started out, you know, I can, I can say that when I started out in Nigeria, vlogging, for instance, being on YouTube wasn't a big deal. Like, it wasn't welcome because people were first a bit skeptical about what is this now that she's doing, this vlogging, this YouTube thing, you know, but I just kept at it, even, even when it was tough to keep at it, you know, growing the numbers are hard. So who is in your network really relying on solid relationships business-wise that would encourage you and not being afraid because a lot of people are really really timid with oh i'm sure when you had this idea for Afrochella, it was something that you probably bounced in your head and bounced in your head but you know if we just have a little bit more courage to be open about even if you think it's still in its sketch or it's still rough and you know just be, being able to promote sell push the world might not listen but keep pushing one day they will listen to you really and truly